Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the John Arbin vlog. It is John Arbin Textiles vlog. Um, yeah, it's been a little while since we were last in touch. I think there have been a couple um, like open weekend sessions and things that have gone up, but we haven't had an official vlog for a couple a couple weeks, maybe even a month. There was a little one about all the things we've been making, but other there than was. that, yeah, we haven't really been talking to you much. So sorry, we're back. <laughs> we are back. Um, um, we have something exciting to share. We've got a lot of things to share today, yes. don't we? Today's a very exciting day. But before we do that, we should introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we always I'm forget. Helena. I'm Sonia, and we are the two directors of uh, this crazy mill. <laughs> Someone put us in charge. We put ourselves in charge. It's a terrible plan. <laughs> We're not really in charge. Donna and Laura are really in charge. Yeah, exactly. Anyone who's been to a show knows that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just allowed to kind of, you know, come in and faff about with stuff. They let us do the spreadsheets because they're so kind. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I send the most emails. True. <laughs> but anyway, we're here to tell you about... Knit by numbers. We are our biggest range Lack. that's hiding behind us. It's hiding behind. It's the giant rainbow wall that you will have seen if you've been to a show. Yes. It is definitely the thing that catches people's eyes at a show, I think. Yes. They just see that giant rainbow and they're like, oh yes. so it's got 115 colours. <gasps> so quite a lot to choose from. And that's in 19 gradients of six. Yes. Plus the white. They all come in these gradients of six. I am holding one. This is I'm holding green. holding the gradient that matches my outfit because it's important to be well coordinated at all times. Um, yeah, it's also one of my favourite gradients. It's a very lovely colour. It's a very popular colour too. But yeah, bottle green numbers 43 to 48. Because yeah. again, numbers. Knitting by numbers. It's, it's very much like by numbers. paint by numbers, if anyone remembers those. I mean, I think they still exist, where you used I to have did. to colour in all the different things. I did a paint by numbers during COVID. I got so, they became very so popular into then, it. They? Yeah. Um, but I was like mixing my own numbers because it wasn't, it wasn't subtle enough. I made like <laughs> a wolf. It was so exciting. It was one of those things that I got like completely obsessive about for like a week. And then Never something again. happened and it's like a third done and is now just like in the drawer. Two years later. Very much like finished. most knitting projects. <laughs> it's a creative process. Sometimes yes. it's just the creative discovery is what you're after. Yes. But yeah, that is why it's called Knit by Numbers. There's so many that every single shade is just a number. Yes. Um, and then, yes, you can pick and choose which ones you want for your palette for your work of art yeah that you may or may not put in a drawer and ignore for several years <laughs> but you'll really be so excited about it at the beginning yes. i mean that <laughs> is the way the beginning it's full of potential but yes we've had this range for a very very long time john launched it who knows best part of a decade ago do you think I is think it so. is it 10 years old i don't know if it's quite that old but it's probably almost that old it's certainly been yeah. here Longer than I've been here, and I've been here nearly seven years. So it creeps so up. We've on had you, it a very long it? time, but uh, we thought it was time for it to have a bit of a revamp. So yeah. we've changed the fibre blend, and we've tweaked a few of the colours. Um, yeah, so we're going to tell you all about all the things we've done, and also how we make it. Yeah, Laura's going to show you how. Should we do that bit first? People always like seeing how it's made. Well, you should start with the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Laura's going to show you exactly how we make these really smooth gradients because um, it's always exactly the same shade and it's very precise. <laughs> and that's because we do it in a very specific technical way. So over to Laura for the specific technical information. <laughs> Hello, I'm Laura. You might remember me from other videos. Because um, we're so excited about Nipper Numbers and the exciting sort of relaunch of it we thought we'd show you a bit about how we make it it's very I... technical and fancy <laughs> it is and it's what i do all day every day i've spent probably the last four months toiling away in the mill oh. remaking all the colors uh from scratch um so it's been a long old job but exciting um, and really excited for everyone to get their hands on it and get knitting with it. And is it finally yesterday or this morning? Was that the end? Yes, the last oh, bit. Oh my days. Um, 
I did a little dance as the last bit um, went through the spinner and I went, yay, I did it. <laughs> I'm ready to make some more next week because Helena says she needs more already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of our wholesale folks have been ordering it and yeah. that's gone out already. So, yeah, uh... so always popular. And so I'll probably be making it for the end, till the end of time, uh, just constantly making it by numbers. So this is how I do it. <laughs> um, we get the uh, Merino BFL mix uh, dyed for us up in Bradford into a selection of base shades. So this is our denim base shade. Uh, and if you're uh, conversant with our numbers, this is number 80 on our Knit by Numbers uh, list of uh, shades. Uh, the denim colours range from 80 to 80. Five. 80, oh, you know, yeah. it is 85. Yeah. <laughs> I can never remember all of them. There are people in the mill who will look at a skein and know what number it is. It's amazing it's skill amazing. there, isn't it? So this is the denim. Uh, and to make all the different colours, I use it in different ratios with white on the machine. So when I'm setting up Ralph, oh, I haven't said, this is Ralph that I'm leaning on. Uh, Let me just we, pan out so yeah. we can show people Ralph properly. Mm -hmm. You can see he's quite big. Um, he's just a tiny bit taller than me uh, and what, sort of a metre and a half wide and five metres long. We normally just show you the front because that's the exciting part. Uh, but I'll show you the back because that's where uh, things are actually happening. So at the back here, uh, I get these. This is just a little uh, sample bit. So I get my spit of denim, I pop it up through these loops and around here. These bits all help to control the tension on the fibre as it comes through the machine. Put that down. And then it comes out of here and I have six of these coming all together into the back of the machine. Like it goes in here and disappears into pressure rollers and through the special teeth inside the gill box. Um, so I won't shove my fingers in there right now. Ralph loves to work in sixes. So we send in six at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how we make our solid denim colour. Six ends, they're called, each one of the base colour. And that makes, ta-da, here's one I made there's earlier. one you made earlier. <laughs> Amazing. Here's the denim as its skein. But because it's knit by numbers, we create a, like, a perfect gradient through um, each colour. So, to get the next colour down, I take out one, I'm actually going to take out that one, and I replace it with a white. <gasps> Magic! And this creates our next shade down, 81. Here Ooh, it is. It's very Blue Peter, I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> so, on my right, your left, that's the base shade, just the pure colour, and next to it is... Uh, one down. They're quite close when you see them uh, together, so we have to be quite careful we don't mix them up in the mill. Um, but when you see them as a gradient in a moment, you'll see how uh, they all sort of shade together. So then the next shade, I take out another blue one. Take that one. And I notice here you're spacing them very evenly am, and precisely yeah. so that it yeah. blends better. If I put those whites all at one end, uh, we'd get a stripier, not so well blended colour. So what I do is always spread them amongst the colour so that you get a more even blend um, and that is reflected in the skeins that it's all sort of looks really even. If you look really carefully, you can still see those individual white and blue fibres in your denim. Um, but if I put all the white on one side and all the blue on the other, you'd actually get a stripy yarn, which we don't quite want with this one. So that makes the next colour down, and then I do another one. You might be seeing a pattern here. And then we get three whites and three denims. And that's half and half. Yeah, and that's this one. So now you can really see the difference between our original base shade and the half and half one. So that's that. And let's so show you the complete bit so far. We've got that one, that one, that one, that one. They are very subtle, yeah. aren't they? So they're subtle when they're close pairs. So those two in the middle, 
they're quite difficult to tell apart. They are in this light at the mill. Yeah. <laughs> the light at the mill's not the best. No, so I have to be careful about what, what I put on each machine so I don't mix them up. But you can see that those start to be quite different. Definitely. And then, as you might imagine, I keep adding white. So, whoa, it's hard now. Take that one out, put that one in, and then probably take that one out. And that one in. And, and that's our palest shade, number 85. And you can see the white, because of the way colour dominance works, it's still actually very blue, yeah. isn't it? Even though it's only a sixth blue. Yeah, it's very different to the pure white. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's still definitely part of the blue family. So there's the solid shade, and this is the palest one. So this is 85, and this is number 80. Amazing. So there they are. Um, and the last one, which is all six white, is actually a completely separate colour, number 55. So I don't make that every time with every gradient. Uh, that one just stays on its own. So that's how we make our different colours. Um, just thought I'd mention as well that uh, some of our base shades are actually pre-blended by us. So, for example, mustard and... Uh, burgundy and orange uh, are some of our pre-blended shades. So we don't actually get, say, um, burgundy dyed uh, anymore. We now blend it. Here's an example of one with denim in. This is navy. Let's and come up and have a little look. So the navy is made up of quite a lot of denim with a bit of black and brown to give it that depth. Um, so we don't buy dyed navy fiber we make it ourselves and that means it just has that signature kind of heathering that yeah. we like to do that's yeah. our favorite thing to do really at the mill yeah. isn't it yeah let's put all of these in order and you can see there we go oh, thing, yay! and they just always look so lovely when they're all together they do they really they? nice look at those beautiful beautiful denim yay you so can't there you be go. blue either, can you? Yeah. I hope that makes a bit more sense to people who are wondering how on earth we make it. Do we get 120 odd colours dyed individually? <laughs> nope. We get, what is it, 10, 12 colours dyed? And then from that, we make that whole range. Um, and that's uh, what keeps me employed. <laughs> <laughs> keeps us all employed. <laughs> be there anytime if anyone's knitting with knit by numbers think of laura having to Working endlessly away. replenish i think that's the thing when you've got a hundred odd colors there's always one that's running out yeah, yeah. <laughs> always um heaving the fiber around the mill and making all these lovely combinations definitely oh well thanks for chatting with us and that's i think right. having the visual will have really help folks understand how it, how yeah, it actually so. happens. Yeah, it helps me to understand it when I learnt it. <laughs> Just seeing it happen, you go, oh, okay, there's six, and I change one, and I change another, and there you go. You make well, new colours. Bob's your uncle. Ta-da! <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Bye! Just showing you how we make the Knit by Numbers colours, and as she mentioned, some of them are a flat dyed colour, and some of them are a heathered colour. Uh, so we're going to show you a close-up of the heathers that are just behind me. So you can have a look and see what they look like. So these are all of our heathered knit by numbers tops, which are available. And that's burgundy and then copper, the brand new orange, which is very look, bright. It's so exciting. And the mustard, which now has a little pop of orange in it. And the olive and the teal and the navy and grape and raspberry. Grape and raspberry. There they okay. are. They're there. Hello, grape and raspberry. So most of those have not changed at all or very much. The most noticeable is the orange and the mustard. And yeah. that the burgundy is now a fancy heathered a, one. A heathered one, which, which looks, the burgundy is like... Um, Viola blackcurrant. It is like Viola blackcurrant. They're mm -hmm. very nice all together in a little rainbow thing. Yeah, so that's tons big. of exciting new tops. Yep. 
So it feels like we've been talking about this blend change for quite a while now, Hells. <laughs> yes. Well, it's taken us a very long time to uh, make this decision and change it over. We've been doing yeah. it for at least a couple of years now. Definitely, definitely, definitely. A it's something that um, back when John and Juliet approached us about buying the mill, which feels like many moons ago now, it's one of the first things that you and I sort of decided we would want to change, isn't yes. it? Um, so I think we've probably, yeah, a couple years, like you say. And so it's very momentous to actually have it filling these shelves behind us now. Um, Almost there. Don't look at the gaps. <laughs> it's, We're it's working so, very hard, but it takes so long. It's 115 colours. So it's so gap free compared to how it's been. Though. It was completely empty the other week. That was quite scary. <laughs> For the first time in God, I don't know, yeah. like years. eight years or something. Um, yeah. So you might have heard us talking about the blend before, but do bear with us because um, probably some people won't have. But uh, yes, we changed it as it was 100% merino. Which is lovely and super soft, yeah. but it does get very fuzzy very quickly. Yes. So we wanted to just improve the quality of the yarn. Yeah. Like we love the old one, but we wanted to just see if we can make it better. But also, we're trying as much as possible to use the local wool where we can. So yeah. Merino comes from the other side of the planet. There's no way around that. So yeah. we've now made it 50% other side of the world and 50% right here. Exactly. And I think that's just like... Hells and I are both quite avid crafters and then along with that goes just like the mill is local, you know, we actually work here so it's quite nice then to be able to use sheep from down the road as well. Um, our blue face Leicester does come from all over the place but some of it's definitely from the West Country. Most of it is, yeah. yeah. But also most of our other yarn ranges also use local wool now so yeah it's like slowly sort of transitioning to most of it being local because we know that's what you love as well exactly so, yeah. i think that's the thing is um and you know like we we both love merino yarn and we'll continue to use it but um you know it doesn't mean we need to make it ourselves we can make something a little bit more yeah. unique than that i think so, so that's yeah, this what one this is bfl is 50 percent blue face leicester yeah. and who doesn't love a blue face leicester with their very cute tiny little winglets <laughs> They've got but, those little ears as well. Yeah, and it's like the softest wool you can get from the UK because we don't grow Marino. that many of the super soft breeds just because of the conditions in this country. So BFL is about the softest we get. Mm. Uh, micron count, all absolute finest, is usually about a 26. Yeah. Whereas the Merino, Merino tends to be somewhere from like an 18 to a 24. Yes. So, um, and most of our other ones will probably be up towards a 30 micron. Yeah. So that's sort of to give you an idea of how they vary. What's the anadelic? Do you know off the top of your head? The Corridale, I think, is, is about a 26, 20, 27, 26. 28. Yeah. Around that kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think the, like, the Exmoor blue face is probably at the like 28, 29. And yeah, same with like the Romney. Um, yeah, definitely close will be a bit coarser, but yeah, it also varies because every time we buy a lot, uh, they do like a little tester on it, so you can see what the um, for that particular lot you're buying how the grade is. So they do vary. So sometimes there'll be a BFL that will pop on and be like, "Oh, this one's about a 26," and then the next time it might be, "Oh, this one's actually closer to a 28." But yeah. You know, it's growing on living creatures who That's live outside, so you get variation. It's, it's a bit like all of us with our hair. It's never exactly the same. <laughs> no, for sure. And if you have a bit of a stressy couple of weeks, it can all get a bit frazzled up there. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's very soft. And uh, where it is a long wool, it's got a lovely luster. So it's it just beautiful. adds a little tiny bit of shine yeah. uh, to the knit by numbers that used to be a very matte colour and this is just a little bit shinier. Yeah. Not very, but you just a little bit noticeable. I think it it definitely it's, is not quite as soft as the old knit by numbers, but it somehow it feels warmer. Like it feels more I'm like <laughs> wearing it. In your beautiful jumper, which we have to talk about in a minute. But it is um 
it feels more like it's come off an animal, like and you it's said. Still perfectly uh, suitable for next to the skin. Oh, definitely. It's very, very soft. Yeah, I need to make a cow. Ooh, that's like this be one my... that Donna made. Donna made this cow. This one is from Kate Davies' Suck. Yes. Uh, book. And it's absolutely, what was it called? Gruggle. Gruggle, I think, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just said to me, get the gruggle off the shelf. And I was like, what is she talking about? Hey, we, we can talk. We call our things very strange names. No, I know. But, well, um, gruggle is great. Yeah, this one's just a very simple uh, twisted stitch pattern, but it shows off uh, the yarn really nicely. It does. It's but, beautiful. Yeah, it's got a little bit um, sort of smoother on the yarn as well with the, the luster and the long wool. Yeah. Um, so it's still very fluffy, but uh, a little bit smoother than it was. So it's just got a little bit more stitch definition than yeah. the previous one. Uh, but other than that, pretty much the same. Yeah. And obviously, most of the colours are exactly the same, other than ones we are doing close-ups of in this. So you Which can see we'll show you any in a minute. that have changed. Definitely. And then I think, you know, the other thing is like, this has been quite a big thing for us, but we'd love to hear what you actually think of it. So if you do happen to try it out, I know we've had the undyed available for quite a long time and Since we've had some really January, lovely feedback yeah. on that. But um, now that we've got the fun colours, I need to get it on my needles. I think I'm going to make a cow. Yeah. But we'd love to hear what you think as well, because I know there's many Knit by Numbers fans out there. So do yeah. tell us. Do you want to kick us off by talking about your beautiful, look at this. So yes, it's made in, obviously, the number 55, the white, because that was all we had for quite a long time, because it, it takes us three or four months to make this full palette of colours, so we haven't had the colours for very long. Yes, so this is uh, Belladonna by Alongavec Anna, who is another Devon-based Yarny, uh, has a little shop down in Exeter, um, and it's just a very squishy brioche uh, and I've done it held with a one strand of mohair, which you can barely see because it's a very, very pale colour. Um, but yeah, it's incredibly warm. <laughs> so it's a good one if you want something that's very cosy, even if you don't do it in a chunky brioche. It's so beautiful, how. So yeah, it was really lovely to knit with. Like I found that like just you know, when you use different yarns, you know, you, some of them you think, oh, this one's actually really nice to work with and others might not be as nice to work with but will make a really nice thing at the end but this was really lovely to work with as well as making a really nice thing at the end so i was very pleased with that i remember looking at your whip and it was so bouncy it just sort of yeah. bounced along didn't it yes but yeah it's always i mean knitting a brioche thing is always very a bouncy thing anyway but uh yeah so this is what i've knitted in it and obviously donna has knitted the groggle um i don't know if anybody else has knitted anything yet i know oh, that Still Faye has new. a pattern we we're going to talk about, but yes, it's brand new. And yet some of the colours aren't even in the cabinet yet, as we're speaking. Yeah, talking of patterns, uh, Faye, who does a lot of our crochet and some knit patterns. She's a good egg. Yeah. Very, very long time ago, she designed this and a crochet one. Uh, this is called Loft. So there's a knit and a crochet version in both four ply and DK yeah. uh, that uses the gradient. So it uses three of the colours from the gradient. So and it's got such the... a it's such a clever just it's always popular every time we go to shows. I think it's just one of those patterns that you just think, oh, I want to make one of those. Like so really this one good uses TV crafting. 116, 118, and 120 in the copper gradient. Yes. And the other ones, I think one of them is in burgundy and one's in denim, and the main crochet one is teal. in teal. Uh, but the really exciting thing is, is she's now done a cowl <gasps> version. And the cowl is lovely. It's like a really kind of tall cowl. It's one of those yeah, ones like that will really keep loop. you cosy. Yeah. Yes. So we'll uh, show you a couple of pictures of that because we don't have, currently have the samples. We haven't seen them yet. No, but Faye is looking super glam in the photos. She is. So Luke uh, will pop yeah, them so in. Another idea for what you can use for um, if you want to use more than one of the colours in the gradient or you want to do across the different gradients and do yeah. you know, one from a different one. So yeah, that's another idea for patterns. So whilst we were tweaking the blend, we thought we'd give it um, a little bit more of a refresh as well um, and most exciting for us or well for me because <laughs> I'm a massive nerd is that we've changed the label how about that um, so it's not really very exciting at all <laughs> 
but um, it's now got this really nice big logo on it and it's quite clean um, we've done the same thing with our mini skeins as well so and then in time um, you'll see the harvest hues will have the same logo label on it as well and um, yeah so we've got a bit of new branding going on um, I don't know why I said that was the most exciting. It's not really. I think it's, it's just the most, the most exciting recent. to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's more just that we only finished it like two weeks ago. So it's still very fresh, I think, is Whereas what it is. The Whereas the shiny new colours we changed a year ago. Exactly. So the shiny new colours are actually obviously more exciting. It's just uh, I'm used to those as well. That's always the way with new stuff, isn't it? It's always like, oh, what's new? Um, but they are beautiful, the new colours. All the colours are beautiful. But um, what we wanted to do was just um, be able to introduce a couple more heathers. Um, so the burgundy, which used to be a dyed colour, is now a heathered shade. Um, and it looks quite similar to Viola Black Current, if you remember that. Um, and it's a real kind of deep maroony red shade, but just with those bright flecks. And then mustard has become slightly more brown, which pleases me greatly. <laughs> it's a really lovely autumnal shade now. Again, it's just got that little bit more speckling to it. And then the same with the orange. Um, so we'll give you a little close up, but a couple of them have changed. Um, and then the biggest change is that we have subbed the yellow for a brand new kind of yellow which is much more of a kind of zippy sunflower yellow. The old yellow was, um, it was beautiful, but it ha had a real orangey cast to it. So we've got more of a kind of traditional bright sunshine yellow now. So we'll give you a little close up of all of those things that have changed. But um, yeah. So as it's October, um, in many a knitting calendar, including ours at the mill, um, that means that it's Socktober rather than October. Um, and we're all knitting some socks. Uh, Donna is knitting hers in the official, oh, look at that, in the official kind of yarn that we've created for Socktober. And this beauty is our Exmoor sock, and it's dyed by Shadow of Felt Fusion who, um, she's a hand dyer and she specializes in these like really fun, playful, saturated shades. I've got a lovely pair of socks um, that I made in her yarn a couple of years back and the colors are still just as bright as they used to be. Um, I was just telling Helena that I'm making my pair of socks in Appledore just because um, folks often email us to ask us if there's like a no nylon yarn that we offer that would work for socks. So I thought, try Appledore. Um, so, but we've got a little Ravelry group as well. If you fancy coming along, I know quite a few of us folks at the mill are making socks. Are you making socks, Hells? Yes, but not in our yarn. Okay. Helen is not allowed. <laughs> I'm stash diving. <laughs> You're not allowed to join in with the Ravelry group, but anyone else? <laughs> I love that. It's nice making stuff that isn't in our yarn. I was doing that last week. It was very exciting for me. I used some black oil yarns. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so there's this gorgeous, and it's called Down Devon Way. And Lauren and Shadow worked on the inspiration together. Lauren found this um, lovely artist who um, is based in Devon. And they're all these like really kind of bucolics, quite folky inspired, um, like nature scenes. And um, then based on that painting, Shadow created this beauty. And we've got some kits um, with some different color combos, which we'll show you. Um, so just in case you fancy doing a contrast heels and toes as well. Um, I think that's my fave. I'm all about the fuchsia or maybe the blues. But um, I think Donna is using missile for hers, so you can also go off piece. But yeah, it's Socktober, so um, if you feel like joining in with the Socktober madness, please do hop on over. Um, it's just a very low-key, fun little uh, knit along on our Ravelry thread, um, inspired by Donna, so. <laughs> 
There we are. Well, so, right. I hope that was all very exciting and informative. Yeah. And, but please let us know if there's something we forgot to tell you about Knit by Numbers that was important. <laughs> it's always a bit brain scrambling, Knit by Numbers. It's all the colours and the gradients and the numbers. So uh, it's more than likely that we've forgotten something very important to tell people. <laughs> yes, we've shown you many things, but yes, I hope you enjoyed yeah. learning all about Knit by Numbers. And, and a bit of silly waffle. And a little bit about our sock knitting. Uh, which is what I'll be doing this weekend. Is that what, what you're going to be doing? Yeah. What's do what? Almost finished my first Are sock. You? So I've got to get on with the second one because otherwise I'll just make one and then I'll stop. The way to do it is like the moment you're casting it off, you have to immediately cast the second one on. Yep. You have to pick like a session. And if you're not going to have long enough knitting, you have to just pop that to one side and don't cast it off. Because, yep. yeah, it's the same with... Um, like, I've got so many socks around my house that just don't have any heels in them because I like doing afterthought heels. Yeah, I just, uh, for part of Socktober, I did just finish a sock that I think has been, I'd knit one sock and I'd got to the heel on the second sock, but eight years ago and I've just no. finished it. Yeah. It was when I still lived in London before I even came to work here. Oh my oh. god, that's probably as old as Knit by Numbers is, that sock. Yeah, probably. It's in a, it was in a little tiny uh, pom-pom project bag, so I think I must have bought it at one of the early pom-pom parties Whoa. back when they did an Pom annual party. Fest. Yeah, yeah, it must have been from, wow, that yeah, is that Such is a long time back. ago, but yeah. So Amazing. I finished a sock and then I did another one. You used to not be a sock knitter. I remember I arguing with you about I find them very the joys fiddly. of sock making. But I've just I've just been on holiday and it involved a six hour journey in each direction. So that's perfect for forcing you to knit a sock because you don't have room to knit anything else. And you don't mind so much that you're doing something very tiny like this. They are portable. They're really yes. portable. I love making a sock. I, yeah, I now have lots of socks in my sock drawer though. Oh, so I don't really need socks at the moment. Oh, but... well. Make some more anyway. Yeah, yeah. But yes, we're all knitting socks, so that's what everyone here is doing for their weekend. Yeah. Um, probably not going for a walk because it's now actually autumn and pouring with rain here. Yeah, and dark. It gets dark so early. Clocks are, yeah. clocks are back It was in very a minute. nice when we had a mini heat wave at the beginning of the month, but yeah, now it's just wet. I know. I'd probably go to the movies. Staying I think. in. Staying Having in. Having a hot chocolate, knitting some socks, maybe yeah. doing a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, I might have, I might crack out the, it's almost time to crack out like the mince pies. Are we yeah. allowed to say those words? Yeah. Maybe. I haven't got any yet, but yeah, maybe. You make the best mince pies. Yeah, we haven't got to the, to the, it's not the word we time. can't say yet. It's time for baking. No. I have I'm had orders for myself. the cakes though. I did find a really good recipe for ginger cake. So maybe mm. I'll do ginger cake. That's like inching its way in that direction, but yes. not too, not too much. <laughs> yes. Well, whatever you're up to with your weekend, we hope it's nice and um, cosy. Cheers for joining in. Yes. Cosy. Or maybe it's like the arrival of summer if you're down under as well. Ooh. But do let us know what you're up to. And um, we hope there's at least a little bit of, you know, fun, inspirational crafting going on. Or at least planning the inspirational crafting. That's often more exciting than the doing. Yes. <laughs> But um, cheers for watching and we'll see you next time.